Yeah. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Uh oh. Are we still dead? <laughs> good morning, Mia. Mia's the only one who did me good morning. Morning. Oh, there, Chabelle. Good morning. Okay. So today we're gonna we're gonna comment on the Gospel of Saint John. We're still we are still reading Saint John. And today the gospel comes from chapter 13, verses 21 to 33. And then it's, this gospel is spliced. It comes in two parts, in 36 to 38. Okay? So, we are Tuesday. We're in Tuesday of Holy Week. So, today's gospel um, recalls the Last Supper. So, it's part of this comes from the Last Supper where our Lord is, is uh, going to point out who it is who is going to betray him. Okay? Because he has already prophesied right, that one of his disciples was going to betray him. So in this gospel, we're going to learn, we're going to hear it later on at Mass. Okay? We don't read the whole gospel in this commentary, but at Mass, we're going to hear who it is and, and how um, John, the beloved disciple, you know, St. Peter nudged him. Go ask him who it is who's gonna betray her. <laughs> and then Saint John leans on the shoulder uh, on the on the uh, uh, shoulder of Jesus and the bosom of Jesus and asks so Master who it is. And then Jesus says, uh, "What did Jesus say?" Uh, Jesus told him, "Buy what you need for the feast." Oh, sorry. What was it? Uh, oh, what what you are going to do? Do quickly. Okay, what you're going to do? Do quickly addressing himself to Judas and then everybody thought and on the table that our Lord was telling him to go buy more bread for the feast or something like that okay but what the Lord really meant was that okay this is my hour so you go ahead do what the devil has influenced you to do which is to betray him okay but that's not what we uh, want to understand and, and, uh, and learn from in this gospel I want to comment on the last part I want to comment about St. Peter because I think St. Peter is very much like many of us. Okay? So I like this characterization of St. Peter. You know, St. Peter uh, has the image of being a strong fisherman, right? Strong guy, you know, macho, right? <laughs> uh, rough, rough kind of uh, character and very daring, very brave, very self-assured and I'm going to do it. You know? What does he tell our Lord when when uh, uh, in this last supper he says Simon Peter said to him master where are you going then Jesus answered him where I'm going you cannot follow me now though you will follow me later Peter said to him master why can I not follow you now I will lay down my life for you then maybe Jesus looking at him with Compassion at the same time, maybe with a smile on his face, right? <laughs> Saying, really now, you are going to die for me, huh? Well, Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen, I say to you, talking to Peter, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. So this is the prediction of Peter's denial. Of Jesus see I think imagine yourself in that on that table okay? he was seeing Peter say no I'm gonna die for you I'm gonna offer my life for you I'm gonna die for you and Jesus maybe with a you know a very understanding tone but at the same time with a little bit of pity realizing that here you go again Peter <laughs> Here you go again. You're promising me again that you're going to... Now you're even saying you're going to die for me? Well, let me tell you. Before the cock crows three times today... Or rather, before the cock crows, you would have denied me three times. So what? You know, this is the same Peter who said... Jesus, let me walk on the water for you. I'm going to walk on the water for you, you know... And Jesus tells him, okay, <laughs> come on here, <laughs> right? And then just as soon as he 
launches himself on the water from the boat. He starts sinking and like a sissy, he said, Oh, Jesus, save me, save me. <laughs> right? So it's laughable, right? Funny how some of us are like Peter. Eh? St. Peter is a great saint, right? That's not, uh, make no mistake about it. St. Peter is a great saint. He was, the, he was the Pope. He was the first Pope. He was the one that Jesus has entrusted the keys of the kingdom of heaven to, right? He said, well, I entrust to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Okay? You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Could you imagine that? Our Lord entrusts the entire church to somebody as weak and as feeble and as, <laughs> as uh, how do you want to characterize him? As uh, self-assured and as cocky as St. Peter, right? Only, only, <laughs> only to crumble at perhaps the easiest of tests, which is to tell the truth about how he knows Jesus. But rather than doing that, he chooses to deny him out of fear. He was a coward after all, right? He was a coward after all. He was a sissy after all. So sorry, St. Peter. You have to get... <laughs> I don't mean to be... Uh, uh, I mean, I just want to demonstrate human frailty by using you as an example. But I know you'll understand me. But this is the image that St. Peter gives us and I know he will forgive us for characterizing him this way because what I want to point out is this we are like Saint Peter in many respects we are also weak we are full of good intentions we are full of great desires I want to become a saint I want to serve God I want to do good but like Saint Peter before he learned this lesson, okay, like St. Peter, before he learned this lesson, God bless you, he relied on his own strength. He was relying on himself. He was relying on his own determination and his own daring and his own uh, machismo to achieve a supernatural end, to do a supernatural endeavor. That was the mistake of St. Peter. He thought that he can do this grand undertaking of the church and follow Jesus Christ and be, be the leader of everybody by relying on his own strength. But he learned his lesson the hard way. Right? Jesus had to humble him. Jesus had to point out to him you know, before the day ends today, you would have denied me three times. So Peter, don't rely on yourself. Rely on the grace of God to help you. There's a reason why sanctity and the, the, the quest for heaven is a supernatural endeavor. Supernatural means beyond natural beyond our natural strength beyond our natural capabilities that's what supernatural means it means that for us to achieve heaven for us to become saints for us to be with god forever in heaven we need god's help this is god's work in us but it doesn't mean to say we will just sit complacently and scratch our bellies and say okay god you want me to become a saint so do it well no God is not going to do it without our help, right? Without No, not without our help, rather, but without our cooperation. We still have to cooperate. We have to cooperate with the graces that God is giving us every day. Okay? We have to put the effort to show God our, uh, our good intentions and our sincerity in wanting to follow Him, in wanting to follow Jesus, to heaven in wanting to follow Jesus to, to God the Father and become saints. We have to put our effort. And that's all that God is asking us is to give everything we've got. And then if we do that, then He will do the rest. He will supply all the graces we need so that we achieve our supernatural end. Okay? 
So we cannot be like Peter, who relied on his own strength, who relied on his own machismo to do what he, what he thought he can achieve. Right? But we have to rely on God. We have to rely on God's grace all the time. Because what we are, what we are undertaking here our supernatural quest, our quest for sanctity is not a purely natural endeavor. This is an invitation from God to become a saint is a supernatural task. And we need the grace of God to do that. So this Lent is a very good time to learn a little humility. To learn a little humility from St. Peter and ask the graces from God to really help us become saints to help us do good be good and follow jesus christ the way he has invited us to okay so today is a good day to think about that oh okay hello edwin oh edwin a classmate of mine from uh, claret school is listening to us and annali annali sancho one of the one of my uh, teachers in uh, Pamantasa ng Makati. And uh, who else is on the call? I, I, I saw several other names. I'm sorry I couldn't read everybody's names. These are all, I can only read three names coming up here. But anyway, <laughs> good uh, evening to you uh, folks. But this, you're in the Philippines. It's, more, it's uh, Tuesday morning here in, uh, in the United States. Okay, it's Tuesday of Holy Week. Well... As I've been saying, we're on the home stretch to Good Friday, so let's uh, let's uh, invigorate our Holy Week journey with all of our mortifications. So we can offer up more and more and more uh, to participate in the uh, in the uh, salvific mission of our Lord that we are going to commemorate in a few days. Okay, folks, have a good day and good night to you and the rest of the world. Bye bye.